I'm here on behalf of Latino and Muslim Unity. My name is Raida Hamida. I'm the lead organizer for today's rally. I'm here along with my counterpart, Mariela Saba. She will be doing our land acknowledgments. Greetings. Let me see. Thank you. Greetings, relatives. From my left all the way around, I want to acknowledge every being here present today. My name is Mariela Saba Chaides Laham Quintanilla. I come here humbly to acknowledge the land beneath my feet and beneath this city hall. I invite each of us who have sacred breath in us to take a moment to tune in to the land beneath your feet. Honor it with our breath, with our life, with our collective fight. I ask con permiso, with permission, with respect and with love I honor the Tongva, the original peoples of these lands for thousands of years, caretakers of these lands, past, present, and future. I honor Gabrielino, Serrano, Tataviam, Chumash, and many more unnamed. I lift up your names and I call with permission and respect that we may gather here to pray, to act, to win a ceasefire now in a genocide in Palestine and honor the genocide of your peoples our people's past, present, facing genocides. We bring our prayers together with yours and acknowledge your bodies, your spirits present, your sacred burial sites beneath City Hall, beneath Union Station, beneath development in Playa Vista or La Plaza nearby. I want to acknowledge your bodies, your spirits beneath these colonized lands. And with permission, it's already given, I feel it. And I'm grateful. Our fights are tied, our liberation, our freedom of this land that is not free as you can see all around. We are here with you to fight for your freedom, your liberation, hand in hand, with all of us, all our peoples here whose roots come from farther and are displaced and have landed here and we have the love and responsibility to be in right relationship with each other and the land until it is free. I thank you from my ancestors to yours to be here, to do our best while we are here and to offer prayers from all the people who will be speaking after me, thank you. Home. That was beautiful, sister. Today, we stand in unity to demand that the city of Los Angeles stop playing politics and start doing their job by representing and protecting all people of Los Angeles and abroad and call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire in Gaza. We demand that the city of Los Angeles speak out. We demand that the city of Los Angeles speak out against the anti-Palestinian hate, against Islamophobia, and protect protest 
protesters observing their First Amendment right to assemble. Our communities are under attack and they deserve the same support and, and protection and protection as any other. Every community is precious. We are here with leaders of all faiths to unite in the pursuit of human rights, justice, liberation for all our people, including Palestinian people as they are continuously dehumanized and dismissed by our government and the media. Safety and security are our universal rights, whether here in Los Angeles or in Gaza. We cannot rely on our policymakers to save us. It is through the power of the people, united, that re makes real change. People united will never be defeated. We've witnessed the massacre of over 30,000 Palestinians and still the city of Los Angeles, whether Palest and still the city of Los Angeles debates whether Palestinian lives are worthy of protection. Yet they hold off on voting in support of a ceasefire. We will hold our public officials accountable. They work for the people, not for special interests. And their duty is to ensure safety for all of us, not just a few. I want to thank our partners today, Latino and Muslim Unity, the Muslim Public Affairs Council, the Council on Islamic on American Islamic Relations, Care LA, Jewish Voice for Peace LA, JVP Action, If Not Now, Labor for Palestine LA, Black Lives Matter LA, Shura Council, Isla LA, and Solidarity Projects. Our speakers today and every single one of you that have shown up in solidarity with us. We recognize that the city council members, Unises Hernandez, Nithya Rahman and Hugo Soto Martinez, we thank you for introducing a ceasefire resolution and calling for all city council members to support a permanent and immediate ceasefire to end the bombing and intentional starvation of the Palestinians by the state of Israel. We are all connected, sisters and brothers. An injury to one is an injury to all. We are not free until we are all free from LA to Gaza. With that, I want to introduce our first speaker, Maki Peters from LA Labor for Palestine. Good afternoon, Los Angeles. My name is Maki Peters. I'm an organizer and a member of Los Angeles Labor for Palestine. The past eight months have revealed so many of the fractures in our society, the flaws in our systems, and that money in politics continues to hold a grip on our institutions. Democracy is in question as we witness a government of elected leaders ignoring the majority of Americans who oppose the brutal slaughter of Palestinian civilians, but respond to moneyed special interests which seek to influence the policy positions of our elected officials. This imbalance of power is by design. Workers have long understood that our opponents, most often the boss, will always be able to outspend us. But we ha have something that they don't, the power of the people, of collective action, and the moral authority that comes with fighting for what is right. Labor for Palestine is carrying on the tradition of labor which was critical to the civil rights movement and in the movement to end apartheid. Healthcare workers today have seen themselves in the way their counterparts in Gaza have been targeted, Academic workers have seen themselves in the destruction of universities in Gaza. This is why countless labor organizations have joined in the call for a ceasefire, and why the Los Angeles Federation of Labor, representing 800,000 workers in the county of Los Angeles, has also called for a ceasefire. We stand side by side with faith leaders, workers, and organizers to make the urgent demand for an immediate and permanent ceasefire, unfettered access to humanitarian aid, and the release of all hostages. 
Thank you to everyone here today. You are people of conscience who believe in the dignity of all human beings and your presence and participation are needed in this fight. In the words of this late civil rights activist and labor leader, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality. It is with this in mind that we stand in solidarity with and in defense of the human family. Free Palestine. Free, free, free Palestine. Long live Palestine. Gaza, Gaza, don't you cry. Palestine will never die. Now I would like to invite my Jewish justice sister, Esty Chandler from Jewish Voice for Peace Action. Ceasefire resolutions are far more than symbolic exercises. They recognize that we as citizens have personal and civic stakes in events that take place around the world. I'm the Jewish American daughter of an Israeli father. I have a large family in Israel. My grandfather fled the pogroms in Ukraine and lured by political Zionism went to Palestine. There's an insidious effort being perpetuated to conflate anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism, to confuse and frighten people from speaking out against that movement's decades-long oppression of Palestinians enforced by the Israeli government. Anti-Semitism is discrimination, violence, and dehumanizing stereotypes directing at Jew, directed at Jews because they are Jewish. Zionism is an over 100 year long project of establishing and developing a state of, by, and for Jews only in historic Palestine at the expense of indigenous Palestinians through settler colonialism, ethnic cleansing, and apartheid. Being anti-Zionist isn't new, nor is it anti-Semitic. It's opposing the political ideology that called for the expulsion of Palestinians from their land and homes in 1948, and to maim, kill, and starve them today. It is disgraceful that nearly nine months of Israel's genocidal assault, that after nearly nine months, of Israel's genocidal assault on the people of Gaza, the Los Angeles City Council has yet to pass a ceasefire resolution to support saving every human life possible. It is more disgraceful that council members Blumenfield and Yaroslavsky are helping to lead a deceitful effort to prolong the genocide and the city council president is supporting them by making a mockery of the council's legislative process to prevent the constituents they represent from making public comments. According to the World Health Organization, the population of Gaza is starving to death. This is genocide. History has her eyes on all of us including elective representatives. We will all be confronted with the question of what we did to stop this genocide and when we did it. Nobody will ever run for office again without being asked that question by the voters. Never again is right now. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Next, I would like to invite the Honorable Dr. Melina Abdullah from Black Lives Matter LA. Yes. Woo. <laughs> Greetings, everybody. Salam alaikum. Grateful to be here. Grateful to be here with all of you. Grateful for so many of you being up, being out on a Friday. We cannot sit by as our people continue to be murdered as our people continue to be genocided. We're up to almost 50,000 
Palestinian bodies being found in the midst of this current genocide. And I want to say that clearly, 50,000 bodies found because that doesn't include those who are probably buried under the rubble, which is estimated to be almost double that number. We cannot sit idly by, we cannot be quiet, and it's shameful that almost nine months into this current iteration of genocide, we have to be here to say something as simple as, Los Angeles demand a ceasefire now. It is ridiculous. It is ridiculous that we stand on the steps of a city hall with a city council who predominantly declares themselves to be progressive and they can't say something as simple as stop killing people. Stop murdering our babies. Stop funding and fueling genocide. That's all a ceasefire means. Let people live. That's literally the smallest thing that you can do. But no, these so-called progressives are doubling down on genocide, doubling down on violent Zionism. They are putting themselves, and we should warn them, their political futures on the line to stand on the side of the murderers, of the genociders, of those who are doing evil. Last night, many of us watched a disaster happen in the form of a duopoly debate. You watched as the embodiment of evil in the form of Donald Trump and the evil of two lessers in the form of genocide Joe talked about how much they support Netanyahu, how much they support a murderous state of Israel. And we groaned and we took to social media and we're saying this can't be our only choice and these are not our only choices. But it's really important that we understand what's happening locally is a local example of what's happening nationally. And we have to say to Blumenfield, we have to say to all of those, uh, Yaroslavsky, we have to say to them, we won't take that from our national leaders and we won't take it from you either. Your political futures are on the line. There will be political consequences and there will be spiritual consequences. So we're, again, we're grateful to be here with so many who stand on the right side. And we know that in just a moment, we're gonna be moving into prayer that there is spiritual energy that is always moving. And when it seems dark, when it seems that this is insurmountable, nothing is too big for us. Nothing is too big when we move righteously in the name of our Creator, in the name of our God. We will have not just a ceasefire now, but a free Palestine. Free! Free Palestine! 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 And I want to introduce my brother, my comrade, my colleague, one again who moves righteously in the name of God, co-founder of the Clergy for Black Lives and professor of Pan-African Studies at Cal State LA, as well as the president of the San Fernando Valley chapter of the NAACP, Dr. James Thomas. Good afternoon. I want to begin by saying that there seems to be some kind of confusion around how we define Zionism. There seems to be some kind of confusion about what that term means. Well, I have come to clear it up for you. I have come to let you know that there is a very easy way to distinguish what we mean when we say Zionism. Zionism is white supremacy. I want you to say that with me. Zionism is white supremacy. One more time, Zionism 
is white supremacy. Why do I say that? Because every place white supremacists have put their feet down, they have decided that the land belonged to them because they stood there. Whether it is in Gaza or South Africa or Los Angeles, it is important to understand that God does not intend for his indigenous people to suffer forever. And so we must do what we must to make sure that the madness ends. Dr. Melina Abdullah, this is off script, but what I'm asking for everyone who is here today under the sound of my voice, I need you to keep this same energy when it is time to change your party affiliation to the one that makes you possible to vote for Dr. Cornell West and Dr. Melina Abdullah. We can do this. People ask, can they win? Yes, if you vote for them. We have to show these people what we mean. We have to let them know that if you are willing to use white supremacy as your political weapon, then we are willing to stand against it with people who represent truth, justice, and love. Now, I've given up on city council a long time ago. I don't ever expect them to do anything that is significant. If they do, I'll be shocked because most elected officials, particularly those who are black, I'm equal opportunity. If you're a black person carrying the water of a white supremacist, I'm calling you out just like the white supremacist. They are dismissive of black demands. They are dismissive of black concerns. And I would dare say that my brown brothers and sisters, their elected officials suffer in many ways from the same ailment. That is that they have drank from the water of white supremacy and are dismissive of what their own people want. But I've come here to serve notice. I've come here to serve notice to the powers that be. Just as the book of Amos says, let justice roll down like a mighty running stream. I've come to let the city council know that if you don't take a path of righteousness, the one that we are presenting to you today, you will deal with the consequences of your actions. You will deal with the consequences of your actions. And so for all of you wonderful people out here, I mean what I say and I say what I mean. If you want change, you can't just do it as we sit here and demand it. Put some meat on the bones, change your party affiliation, and vote for the people who are standing with you today. God bless you. Cease fire now! Cease fire now! What do we want? When do we want it? Now. Louder, sisters and brothers. What do we want? When do we want it? Now. And if we don't get it, down. and if we don't get it, down. next I would like to introduce my brother from JVPLA, Avraham Kutin. How good it is and how pleasant to sit with brothers and sisters together. I'm honored to be here today with you all. My name is Avraham, and though I am a proud Jewish anti-Zionist, I was born in Zionism. As a Zionist, I was taught many lies about Palestine. I was taught that to acknowledge Palestine's existence was a threat to Jewish safety. I was taught that Palestinians were a political movement and not a people. 
that before Israel, there was nothing but sand and ancient ruins. There was no Palestine and there were no Palestinians. This is Zionism and this is all wrong. Palestine is real, regardless of what Zionism says. Palestine has existed for hundreds, thousands of years and Israel is a 20th century creation. Palestinians are from destroyed cities and towns that Israel built right over. Farms, industry, ports, markets. This is Palestine, spanning from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. The Zionists did not want Palestine because it was empty as they claim. They stole it because it was full. Zionists will have you believe acknowledging these truths is a form of hatred. They will claim that recognition of Palestine denies Israel's right to exist and therefore Jewish people's right to exist. It is the other way around. It is Israel and Zionism that deny Palestine's existence, Palestine's right to exist, and Palestinians right to return. American politicians fail to properly ask the question, what is Zionism? Zionism is a political ideology that justifies the violent erasure of Palestine by manipulating and degrading Judaism. Zionism is not religion. We call on the city of LA to pass a ceasefire resolution. A ceasefire is not anti-Semitic. Zionism is anti-Semitic. <laughs> Judaism stands for tikkun olam, healing the world, and pikuach nefesh, saving life. Zionism stands for ethnic and religious supremacy, total dehumanization of Palestinians, and genocide. These attributes are an affront to Judaism. Last week, I was here at city council pushing for a ceasefire. Within 10 seconds, the council shut me down and the bailiff got physical with me. How quick are they to put their hands on Jewish people? They don't care about our well-being. Only Israel, only Zionism. I'm tired of Zionism and Israel speaking for me. I'm tired of Christian nationalist American politicians who are both Zionist and anti-Semitic themselves telling Americans what is and isn't anti-Semitic and what is and isn't good for Jews. I'm tired of the privilege Zionists and the Israeli government have in America. Checking Israel's privilege is the best thing that America can do to combat anti-Semitism. Israel should not have a say on America's foreign policy and should not be able to dictate what Americans can and can't say. As a younger person, I was in Israel in 2008. I could hear Israel bombing Gaza then. Almost everywhere we went for weeks, every hour, you could hear and feel the bombs. So I know October 7th was not the beginning. People try to say that those who support Palestinians get their information from propaganda. I learned about what Israel really was, what Zionism was from former Israeli soldiers. So I know what Palestinians tell us about the violence they constantly endure from Israel. We should believe them. It is true and disturbing that anti-Semitism is on the rise. But make no mistake, the greatest threat to Jewish safety in America right now, outside of outright Nazis, are Zionists. In the last six months, myself and my Jewish friends have been issued death threats from Zionists more times than I can count. At the beginning of the year, Jewish and Palestinian students at Columbia University standing together for peace were assaulted with chemical warfare by Zionists, Israeli agents. Yet the students were blamed and the assailants were never apprehended. In the last few months alone, scores of Jewish Americans have been brutalized by either Zionists or police. Across the country, Zionists have engaged in violence against America's students, many of them Jewish, with impunity, ranging from mace, physical beatings with weapons, and explosive devices. Instead of arresting the perpetrators, police arrested and brutalized further the same students under attack from the Zionists. And this weekend, during an illegal sale of stolen Palestinian land, supporters of Palestinian liberation, a rainbow coalition of Americans, including many Jews, were again assaulted by Zionists and again blamed for it. This must end. The, the insistence from Zionism and from the Israeli and American government that Jews belong to Israel matched with the extreme privilege that all Americans are seeing Zionists have is what is fermenting anti-Semitism. I say to the city of Los Angeles, in failing to pass ceasefire, by currying favor to Zionists, by attempting to bring a foreign government's military into our police force, you are not only stoking anti-Semitism and Islamophobia yourselves, 
you are not only encouraging violence towards Palestinian people, but you are betraying your oath to Americans. If Russia or China were buying off American politicians, we would call that espionage and treason. When Israel buys our politicians, we simply call it APAC. But it is plata or plomo. It is long time we recognize how every American, in every workplace, in every academic or government institution is afraid of Zionists, afraid of losing their careers if they speak against Israel. Zionist orgs are engaging in the American political system and wreaking havoc on the wrong side of environmental justice, education, the wrong side of LGBTQ and women's rights. Now Zionists and Israel want a piece of America's police force. Los Angeles, are we serious? You will really cower to this foreign government? It is time we as a city and as a nation reject Zionism and stand with humanity. <laughs> Palestinians are not who Zionists accuse them of being. Zionist accusations are confessions. They are the criminals. Zionists have destroyed Palestine. They dehumanize Palestinians. They attack Jews if we reject Israel's lies. They are destroying the legacy of Judaism, and they are destroying America. We say, Dayenu, enough. We say, never again is for everyone. And until all of us are free, none of us are free. Cease fire now and free Palestine. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Avra. We would like to also invite uh, my sister, Basha Jamil, from the Council on Amer American Islamic Relations, Care Ali. Thank you, Raida. Thank you, everyone. Salam alaikum. May peace and blessings be on everyone here today. Uh, my name is Basha Jamil. I'm here on behalf of the Council on American Islamic Relations, Care LA. We are the largest American Muslim civil liberties organization in the country. We've been operating in the LA area for nearly three decades, combating hate and Islamophobia. Los Angeles is home to one of the largest Arab and Muslim populations in the country. And since October 7th, we've seen an unprecedented number of reports of anti-Palestinian, anti-Arab, and Islamophobic hate. From October 7th to June of this year, we've seen total bias incidents in Los Angeles reported to care more than double, with a 115% increase from uh, cases in the year before. 55 hate crimes were reported in Los Angeles in this period, as opposed to only two the year before. 49 incidents of hate on college campuses reported to CARE LA, as opposed to only one the year before in the city of LA. We're seeing a nearly 30% increase in the rise um, of reported hate incidents in K through 12 schools, and employment-related harassment against Muslims and Arabs has more than doubled. Now, our community tends to under-report hate incidents. So we know that these data points are likely not telling the full story of the extent of hate that our community is actually facing here in LA. Still, these numbers clearly show that hate against Arabs and Muslims and those who are allies in the struggle for Palestinian human rights, dignity, and full liberation are being violently targeted. And those responsible for the violence have enjoyed impunity and police protection. Not only are those anti-Palestinian and anti-Muslim instigators, like the violent Zionist mobs attacking peaceful anti-genocide student protesters at UCLA, or the attackers waving Israeli flags defending the illegal sale of ethnically cleansed Palestinian land at last week's so-called real estate event at an LA synagogue, not only do they enjoy impunity, they're also painted as victims of anti-Semitism. Conflating anti-Semitism, hatred against Jewish people, with anti-Zionism and legitimate criticism of the state of Israel and its crimes against humanity is a dangerous and sinister attempt to weaponize accusations of anti-Semitism, to silence the movement for Palestinian liberation. 
This is a movement with broad support from people of all kinds of backgrounds, including, as you just saw, our Jewish brothers and sisters who have also not been spared Zionist violence when they call for an end to Israel's genocide in Gaza. We are deeply, deeply disappointed that the Los Angeles City Council continues to perpetuate this dangerous and false narrative and use this narrative to crush our constitutional right to free speech and assembly. We call on the Los Angeles City Council to speak up against the genocide in Gaza and join cities from across the state and across the country, including San Francisco, Oakland, Long Beach, Santa Monica, Pomona, Montebello, and so many others in calling for a ceasefire. We call on the council to reject a proposed motion of spending $1 million of public funding, of taxpayer money, to fund private security for Zionist groups. The Palestinian, Arab, and Muslim communities, we deserve to be protected by our elected officials. Where is the funding to protect us and all of those who are exercising their constitutional right to demand an end to the US-backed genocide in Gaza? We call on the council to do the right thing, investigate these hate crimes, hold Zionists accountable, and protect your Arab and Muslim communities. Free Palestine, thank you. Introducing my Jewish sister, Rabbi Robin Podolsky. <laughs> Hello. I'm here as a proud constituent of Hugo Soto Martinez. And you should know that now, because of this resolution that he co-sponsored, he not only has my vote and that of my neighbors and friends, he has earned our volunteer energy if she, he should ever run for anything ever again. We're here to support the pro-ceasefire resolution buried now in committee by our city council. The only way to bring safety to all the peoples of the region is a multilateral ceasefire, an exchange of hostages, and a political solution that guarantees the human rights as well as the safety of all of the peoples of Israel-Palestine. Tomorrow is Shabbat, our day of rest, our Sabbath, our day of prayer. One of our prayers as we place our Torah, our scripture, into her ark is, her way is the way of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. It is a mockery of Torah to commit massacre in the name of Jews. We learn in, in our Talmud in Gittin 59.5b, Rabbi Abaye taught all of the Torah is mifnei darchei shalom, is for the sake of the path of peace. However, we are also taught by Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel on three things this world of ours depends on justice, on truth, and on peace. Long before it was cool, Jews were warning, no justice, no peace, no truth, no justice. The truth is that for there to be peace, for any of us to be safe, the unjust brutalization and murder of Gazan civilians, most of whom are children, along with the brutalization and killing of shepherding communities in the occupied West Bank, must stop. Finally, anti-Semitism is real. It is dangerous. It is an evil we must resist. All the more so, then, we must be very precise and accurate in the way that we identify anti-Semitism when it rears its head. To protest the unjust prosecution of a war against the entire civilian population of Gaza is not anti-Semitic. To protest the sale of Palestinian land in the occupied territories to people who wish to live, quote, in a nice Anglo neighborhood, unquote, is not anti-Semitic. Especially since, as we've heard today, some of the most consistent and dedicated protesters 
Some of the people who have been injured seriously by counter-protesters are proud Jews. I wish you a Juma Mar I wish you a Juma Mubarak, a day of prayer and grace. I wish you a Shabbat Shalom, a day of prayer and grace. And I pray that our city council has the wisdom to pass this resolution calling for ceasefire, a return of hostages, and immediate humanitarian aid to Gaza. Can you hear us so, and may it be God's will. Thank you, Rabbi Robin. We're here united as Jewish sisters and brothers, Palestinian sisters and brothers, black, Muslim sisters and brothers, Latino, indigenous, Asian. We are all connected. And we are also calling for all of us to band together on Tuesday to continue this fight to call against LA City Council's injustice in failing to recognize Palestinian suffering while only recognizing the suffering of folks that actually have misinformed and allowed media to generate propaganda against Palestinians and Muslims. And we all deserve safety in the city of LA. We all deserve support, including our Muslim sisters and brothers. So please pay attention to what's happening in city council on Tuesday as well. With that, I'd like to invite our, if not, if not now, brother, Jewish justice ally, Benjamin Vizcara Barton. Hello, my name is Benjamin Vizcarra Barton. I'm a born and raised Angelino. I'm Chicano and I'm Jewish. I'm speaking today on behalf of those who have come before me. My ancestors who rode alongside Emiliano Zapata. My ancestors who fled persecution in the shtetls of Latvia and Lithuania. To all of them, I say thank you. Thank you for surviving. I'm often asked why I, a Jewish person, support the Palestinian struggle. And to those who ask, I say that we Jews have been oppressed and targeted for thousands of years. I was taught this history from a very young age and was shown what generations of hatred and scapegoating did to my people. From pogrom to genocides, from displacement to forced conversion and erasure, we've seen it all. But learning this history has taught me many lessons and one in particular that I'm carrying with me here today, that oppression breeds resistance. We Jews know what resistance looks like. We have seen it in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. We have seen it in the martyrs of the Chicano Moratorium here in LA. We've seen it in our siblings of the Black Lives Matter movement. And we see it now in the hearts and minds of Palestinian people. We're standing here today as members of the long list of resistors bred by the ongoing oppression of the Palestinian people by the Israeli apartheid regime. The list is long and will continue to grow longer because our struggle is not just against these silly council members, but the much larger systems of white supremacy and US imperialism. Those structures which are baked into the facade of this city hall. Council members Bob Blumenfeld and Katie Yaroslavsky, I've read your statements on the ceasefire resolution. And as a Jewish Angelino, I'm telling you that you have no idea what anti-Semitism truly means. You look the other way as people waving Israeli flags call us monkeys and threaten our mothers. You look the other way when they tell us that we're not real Jews. You look the other way when they ripped the yarmulke off my head and sprayed me with mace. You don't care about the Jewish people. Your words are a stain on our history and we Angelinos are not standing idly by any longer to watch you drag our city down the wrong path. Thank you. I would like to invite my Palestinian Mahigana sister, Mariela Saba. Thank you. Greetings, relatives. My name is Mariela Saba Chaides Laham Quintanilla. My roots come from Palestine, from Palestine on my father's side, and Mexico on my mother's side, and I was born in East LA. Not for kicks, not for fun, not to cruise, but because my grandfather in 1948 was forcefully displaced 
with over 750,000 other relatives. He didn't die from being bombed, but he died from a heart attack years later because genocide and oppression kills us from all angles. I am a proud Palestinian Mexicana. I'm also a hurting Palestinian Mexicana. I'm a hurting human being. I have sadness every single day that these genocides continue on our watch. And I have a level of embarrassment and shame on this city that has still failed to do the basic, to listen to the cries on the grounds in Palestine and the grounds in Skid Row that say, cease fire now! They say it from their souls. I listen to my martyrs, the ancestors who urge us in their cries, the babies, the mothers, the grandfathers who urge us to minimally say and do and act, cease fire now means stop, means no more. And it doesn't end there, family. The ancestors here ask us to be in right relationship with each other. In the midst of urgency, they ask us to slow down and tend to our relationships to tend to the healing needed in here internally and between us, to get over the politics in here. I have blood on my hands and everyone here has some blood on their hands on this occupied land. And some of you inside there are double dipping your hands in blood and some of you even enjoy it. The white supremacy we speak of is what we're up against. The occupation of this land and Palestine is what we are up against and what will be free. It is known, it is the truth, it will happen, Palestine will be free. It's in our souls, it's in our duty, it's in all of us. We need to let go of this occupation. We need to let go of that building across there that holds thousands of people, millions of people hostage. The carceral state here, the police state here, it's all interconnected and it has a hold on this land and on the pens that are refusing to just sign off quickly on a ceasefire that was due long ago. That is not the all end all. They are asking us to end the occupation, to return to the lands. May all our displaced people, you and I and them, be able to return to tend the lands that call us, that saw us born, that saw us displaced. Thank you, relatives, for listening, for being present. May we get over the politics in here, do the ceasefire now, and take care of the other things on the side. And may we take care of each other. We need some, a medic down there. Let's practice care, family. Let's win together. Peace.